podcast. Can you hear me all? Awesome. Thank you. Well, welcome to the very first music tech conference. Let's give them a big round of applause. So let me go ahead and have my, my slideshow ready. Can you all see over there? I brought a bunch of goodies to show you and share with you. And I'm going to move around here if you don't mind. I like to be mobile, um, if you don't mind. And we're working very hard under, under this mayor to make sure that we live up to that expectation. So there's my email, if I can be of service to you. And there's our mayor, Daniela Levine Cava. She's the first woman mayor in the history of Miami-Dade County. So very proud of that. And, you know, a lot of folks don't know, she is... I think she's an artist because I always see her dancing <laughs> at events. I see her, uh, I know she's a big fan of poetry, right, and writers. And so we have a poet laureate at the county. So um, it's very interesting, all the things that I think she appreciates art. She's a social worker at heart. Um, she's a trained uh, a lawyer. But when she first started her, her career 30, 40 years ago, she became a social worker. And on top of that, she's an entrepreneur, just like all of you, because artists have to be business people, right? We know the art, but how about the business side? So she's also an entrepreneur because she started a company, or a nonprofit, rather, in the 90s called Catalyst Miami. And some of you may have heard of Catalyst Miami. It's still going on strong to this very day. So check that out as well. And um, I go back six, seven years before she was the mayor I used to lead an organization called Accelerate South Dade. It was a small business incubator. And here are some of my clients. So we had a lot of fun. You know, having a business is fun, right? Art and expressing yourself is fun, right? Are you guys excited? Yeah. Okay, great. So a little bit about me, just some real quickly thing. I'm a, I, you see my boots? Uh, I'm a motorcycle guy. You know, I ride motorcycles. I didn't ride it this way because it's too hot and the traffic is kind of crazy. So uh, commuting in Miami and motorcycles is tough. But... Um, a couple years ago, I decided to, let me see this great country of ours and go down Route 66 all the way to California, from Miami to California. I have designs on a trip from here to Alaska and back. So uh, these things take time, but guess what? That's why I'm an entrepreneur, right? Because all you have to do is, who do you ask for permission? You look in the mirror, right? And you say, hey, I want to go on this trip. Do you approve it? Yes, you're approved. And, and look where my motorcycle took me. That's the most proudest thing that I ever saw. I mean, I, and I, you know, when I went to this place, thank you, I appreciate that. When I went to this place, I didn't know what to expect because you're exploring new things. And I didn't realize I parked my motorcycle in the parking lot and this big hole in the ground was literally like 200 feet away from the parking space. I couldn't believe it. I didn't know what to expect, but I didn't know it was that close. And this was really spiritual for me because when you sit there and you see how, how insignificant I am <laughs> compared to that, a thousand foot tall. I don't even know how tall it is, but it's thousands of feet. If I jumped in there, nobody would even hear me scream. And yet, I thought to myself, I sat down and just took it in, right? And I thought to myself, yes, I'm so insignificantly small. But at the same time, you see those layers that you see in the, in the rock? Those are pages in a book. So those are all different time periods that get recorded in the layers of the rock. So what you see here, I think, is over 2 million years of history of the earth. And so guess what? I may be insignificant. We all are tiny compared to that, but we're also part of it, right? And I think artists, more than anybody, get that. Does that make sense? I think we really appreciate that. And that's why I love artists and I love entrepreneurs. But I know sometimes it's hard. It's hard to be an artist. There's a story of a guy who used to go, he used to work at, um, at a, one of these uh, holiday card companies. He was a designer of holiday cards. And he used to go to schools. And in kin kindergarten, he would ask people, how many artists are in the room? And guess what happened in kindergarten? Everybody raised their hands, right? Everybody was an artist. But then like around sixth grade, he would ask the same question. How many artists are in the room? And guess what happened? Only like three hands went up. And they were like nervous hands. They're like, I, I am. And they were scared to admit that they were artists because school, I guess, had shown them that trying new things, experimenting, thinking about new ideas, new ways to look at things was not what you're supposed to do. And so that's kind of the entrepreneurial um, way. It's the artist's way. And it takes courage. It takes a lot of courage. And some days it feels like this where you, you can't sell, you know, you can't, you don't know how to market, you feel incompetent, you don't feel like you don't know what you're doing, and we have our ups and downs, and I think artists are famous, really, we're famous for beating ourselves up, right? We're, we're really tough on ourselves. The inner critic is really harsh uh, to artists, right? 
And so we have to keep that in mind and understand that it's a roller coaster, but that we can get through it. Even when days feel like this, you know, you have to ask for help. And so this is one of my favorite analogies for what your job is as an, as an entrepreneur, as an artist, right? Who's in the driver's seat? Who's in the driver's seat? You are. That's right. You are in the driver's seat. Now, what are all these people doing? They are helping you. So that's the best piece of advice after 20 plus years of doing this. I guess some part of me that was the, the warrior, things that we can do it by ourselves, right? That I can break, you know, do it all on my own. I can, I can just take, grab myself by the bootstraps and make it happen all by my own strength. And it doesn't work that way. Entrepreneurship is a team effort. And so we need all these people helping you. And one of those um, has to be the county. I want you to see the county and Strive 305, which is our program, as one of those helpers. And I can tell you after 25 years that now is the best time to be an artist. Now is the best time to be an entrepreneur because I've never seen so many people lined up to change those tires on your car. I've been in Miami, Dade County since 1979. I'm from Nicaragua and I came when I was a little kid and uh, fl fighting, you know, fleeing from war. And when we came, we had nothing. And I've lived a lot in Miami, seen a lot of changes, but I've never seen so many people eager at all levels of government, at all, you know, nonprofits, the private and uh, private sector all lined up to help you become successful. In fact, I'll say this, we need you to be successful because we need you to build a company here in Miami-Dade County, manufacture goods, uh, express your art, turn this into the capital of entertainment or music, of art in the world, which it already is, but we can do better even, right? And so now is the time to do it. If you have a dream, there's never been a better time to make it happen. So what I wanna share with you is Strive 305, which is our program. And the cool thing about this is that we are gonna tackle some challenges that you face, right? You're gonna face these challenges. You're gonna need money. You're gonna need access to resources and information, right? You're gonna need real training that helps you get the, the, the results that you want. Affordable spaces to record your work, to do your art, right? To work with others and you need community. So that's what we're focused on. So now that you guys have a picture, let me show you the next slide. We <clears throat> know that you're gonna have these challenges in your business. Value creation is a part of your business that you have to be designing. Marketing, sales, value delivery, and finance. These are critical areas that we need to figure out in your small business, and Strive 305 is geared to helping you with these areas, okay? So I wanna share with you guys a bunch of resources that are there right now, and you wanna take a lot of pictures here, okay? Resources that are there to help you right now that you can take advantage of starting today. Not one day, today, okay? You ready? All right, so we have an access to capital issue. We need money. Okay, so what are we doing about that in the county? So we have partnered with this website, accesshelps.org. Have you, anybody, raise your hands if you've heard of it. So nobody, perfect, I'm in the right room. So accesshelps.org is your one-stop shop for all grants and loans for your small business. Okay, and as artists, you have a small business. And we want to make it into a big business, right? It reminds me of that Jay-Z line. You remember that Jay-Z line? I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man, right? <laughs> so you have to remember that. That's exactly right. So Access Helps, if you click on small business owners, you can get access to all the grants and all the loans that are available to you in Miami-Dade County. Okay? You don't have to be looking around all over the internet to find them. They're right here. One convenient location. The mayor in Miami-Dade County have invested in this platform called Access Helps. It's available in three languages. We're really proud of that. Nobody gets to miss out, right? So it's in English, Spanish, and Creole. So please check that out, all right? Next up is, how many of you have heard of Miami Open for Business? Okay, one person has heard about Miami Open for Business. They have three products that they offer, right? This is a donation from Wells Fargo, from PPP commissions to the people of Miami-Dade County, specifically you guys. <clears throat> which are small business owners, right? So if you go to Miami Foundation, or rather yet, go to MiamiOpenForBusiness.com, okay? Or Google it, but go to MiamiOpenForBusiness.com. They have three products. One is a technology grant. So if you need software, if you need technology, they'll give you a grant for minority-owned businesses, right? Between $100 and $20,000. So even small grants, you might not need a, you know, thousands of dollars, 
but you might need a piece of software that you, that you need to pay for. Well, if you need $500, you can still apply. If you need $20,000, you can apply. So please check that out. They also have something called the ABLE Fund. Under the ABLE Fund, that's a loan program that will lend you up to $100,000, right? Because marketing our art is expensive, right? So, and it's for act for buying assets in your business. Wells Fargo wants you to own things, not just lease them. So under the ABLE Loan Fund, they will lend you up to $100,000. Guess what, at what percentage? 3%. Can you find that anywhere? Nope. Nope. And it's getting more expensive to borrow money. So, and for the rest of the year, that's kind of the weather we're going to be dealing with is more higher interest rates, not smaller. So 3% for you to acquire assets. And in other words, if you need a truck or you need a van, can you buy it? Buy the van. Don't be leasing it. That's what, that's the idea of the program, right? For you to own things as opposed to um, leasing them. There's one other one, and I'm going to mention just in case any of you are thinking of real estate. They have a program called Creo, C-R-E-O, which will give you $500,000 in down payment assistance for you, to, with, for you to go in with a partner to take a building in a, in a specific part of a town, usually a part of town that's not getting the love it deserves. And you're going to take that building that's kind of just sitting there, but it could be tremendously useful if, if, if somebody rehabbed it. You can rehab it, you can buy it and rehab it and do something great with it. They will give you $500,000. Right. If you're going to impact that community in a positive way, five hundred thousand dollars. And guess what? At three percent. And guess what? It's forgivable. Forgivable. So I mentioned that in case there's any real estate investors in the house that want to leverage that. The idea is you go to a neighborhood, you see that building that's abandoned, turn it into something cool for the whole community. And that's the whole idea of the program. That's the spirit of it. So three great products from $100 to $500,000 all free because of this program. We were one of the few cities in the nation that were selected by Wells Fargo for this to happen. So we're in a unique position. That's why I'm saying it's the best time to get going. The next thing is BizUp. Have any of you heard of BizUp? Okay, so you see the mayor here handing out big checks. <laughs> so do you want, maybe you can get a big check. So BizUp is a pitch competition, and in this year's budget, there is $1.5 million that will be disbursed to entrepreneurs that have a big idea that can pitch it to a panel of judges and win. And the grants will be $25,000 and $50,000. And there's $1.5 million in that fund. And this is an official Miami-Dade County program. We're looking for somebody that has a big idea that can grow, that can scale, that can create something really cool in the community. And so that's a great opportunity. It's going to be coming down later this year. And so please stay tuned. I'll show you how to, how to stay abreast of all this stuff so you don't get lost. Okay, so biz up. Remember that. The next thing is there's a traditional loan program from the Miami-Dade County Federal Credit Union. It's called Rise Miami-Dade. And this is still available. You can get up to $75,000, I believe. And the interest rate, last I checked, and it, remember, it's going up. It's 8%. Right? So it's not 3% for sure. But if you have a big idea that you know will work, right, why be afraid of pursuing it if you know you can make money on it and paying the 8% if that's something that makes sense for your small business? So check it out. This the, credit, the Miami-Dade um, County Federal Credit Union is a CDFI. How many of you know what a CDFI is? Raise your hands. Okay, great. I'm glad that you're here because this is something you need to know. Um, one of the challenges is when we start our business, we may not be credit worthy yet, right? We may not have enough credit personally or enough credit from the business side. So you have to build it up. So if you go to the bank, they're going to tell you no. So because of that, you have to understand that there's a bunch of options for you to start getting the capital because you know that adage that says you got to uh, invest money to make money? It's kind of true. You have to invest. Customers are not free. You have to buy customers, right? It's true. You can actually calculate how much one customer costs your company to acquire. So if you want, if you want to get to a million dollars, there's a math equation you can set up to know how much money you need to get to the million dollars. And one of the things that I see is that a lot of my uh, small business owners think too little and they hesitate to move the capital around to make their dream come true. You, that can't be you. You know what I'm saying? If you really want to reach that goal, reach it and know that you need to budget for it. So you're going to need capital, right? So a CDF5 is a community 
Development Financial Institution. So these are like banks, but these are special banks that the government gives them money to lend to you, but not only to lend to you, to get you ready and your business ready to be bankable. Does that make sense? So they're not gonna just tell you no like the normal bank would. They're gonna tell you, okay, no right now, but you need to work on your business plan. You need to work on your financial statements and we have support services for you so you can start working on that so that you can qualify for that loan. So you all need to know who the CDFIs are and connect with all of them and see what they're offering you so that you can level up. Does that make sense? Okay, if you have any questions, please sh shout them out, um, don't be shy. The next thing is, I'm working on this because this is, a, um, again, some funding from the federal government that was given to the states. And it's called the, the SSBCI, right? The Florida State Small Business Credit Initiative. It says Florida on it, but it's actually a federal program. So Florida got, right now, has $142 million that they put out into the, um, into the ecosystem of Florida. And the cool thing that you need to know is that this money is available now, but they're not gonna give it directly to entrepreneurs. They're gonna deal with the CDFIs or the banks. So go talk to your bank and ask them about the SSBCI program and if they're participating in it. Does that make sense? And learn more about this program. It's being managed and there's a lot of changes in this program. I will work hard to get better instructions for you all on how to leverage this. But right now, the best thing you can do is talk to your lenders or CDFIs to see if they participate in this and ask them, how can I get involved? Because the thing about this program is that they will lend money to solopreneurs all the way to companies that have 500 employees. So that's still a small company, believe it or not, right? I think the SBA says a small business goes all the way up to 250 employees. So that's small to them. And I get it, right? We live in a, in a, in a world where companies have trillion dollar valuations, right? They're no longer billions. Now we're talking trillions. So my thing is, let's get some of that money in your pocket. Let's make something great happen in your small business. But it's up to you guys to take action, okay? So keep that in mind. And um, we partner with many of the federal government agencies. If you want to export product, if you want to export your art, whatever it is, there's all kinds of help from the Exxon Bank, from the U.S. Department of Commerce, from all the departments. Like I said, everybody's lining up to help you. So if you need assistance with that, you can connect with me and I will connect you to these resources, okay? Next, so that was access to capital, right? That's a lot. Is there, so there is money, right? We just have to go and go find it. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's go next to the next uh, section, which is access to resources. So the first thing is we have a portal and it's called miamiday.gov slash strive305. That's pretty easy to remember, right? So if you go to this portal, you won't get lost. You won't lose track of me. You can connect to the mayor's office and see everything that we're working on to help you. So if you remember nothing from today, remember miamiday.gov slash strive305, okay? So we have that portal and it has everything you need there. Um, I have a newsletter that goes out every week that is designed to inform you about these things every week. Yes, right here. So if you go to this website, you won't, this portal, you won't get lost. Next up, everybody get it? Ellen, did you get it? Yeah. Okay, great. So I have a newsletter. It's made with love every single week, comes out in the afternoon on Thursdays. And it has, who do we have in the morning huddle? I'll tell you about that in a second. But it also has some of the most important resources that you need to be paying attention to. If it's important, you're going to know about it because you get this newsletter. That's the promise. So if you go to this website here, the Strive 305 portal, you can sign up at the very top. You see how it says sign up for uh, updates? Sign up there, please, and check it out because it's, during COVID, I talked to a lot of small business owners that were each actually crying on the phone because they got the bad information, they didn't know where to go, they were lost, and that's the worst feeling, and we don't need that. There are resources, there's help. Okay, so um, the morning huddle happens every Friday, you're invited at 10 a.m. We have a Zoom call every single Friday at 10 a.m. We've been doing it for three years. The first one was, remember when we were in quarantine that first Monday? That's the first morning huddle. And it's been so popular and people love it so much that three years later it's still happening. So 
if you need community, if you want to meet with people, if you want to connect with others that can help each other out, I'm always saying, please help each other out also, right? Be a light for each other. And if you want to do that, if you want to participate in a community so you don't feel alone, check out the morning huddle, okay? Every Friday at 10 a.m. Now, access to training. This is also very important. We have a marketing, a digital marketing masterclass series. So in my experience with entrepreneurs and small business owners for 20 plus years, what are the two areas you think that we struggle the most in? What, what's one? Marketing, you got it. What's the other one? We talked about it already. We did a whole section on it. Finances, yes. So finances and marketing, I have found, are the big obstacles to getting what you want, to building your dream. So those are the two things where we really focused on, right? So we already talked about finance and getting the money that you need. But how about the marketing? Very important. So we partnered with a company called BizHack. They, they train folks in how to do on digital marketing. Digital marketing is basically knowing how to put ads on Facebook, Google, et cetera, and know how to do it right. Because the most common thing in the world is to invest money in Facebook ads and get how many sales? Zippo or one, right? Yes. It's very hard because you have to know how to do it. If not, you're just wasting your money and I don't want you to waste your money, right? It's too valuable. It's too hard to get sometimes. So please be smart about it. So we wanted you to be a world-class marketer. How many of you are marketers in this room? Everybody's hand should be up, guys. Everybody's hand. Everybody here's a marketer. If you're a small business, you're a marketer. And in art, come on. Who are the people that are making millions in art? Marketers, right? And Jay-Z <laughs> will be the first one to tell you, right? And Beyonce and Taylor Swift and all of them, right? They will tell you. You have to market what you're doing. So... Let's become world-class marketers. If they can do it, you can do it too. So there's these digital marketing masterclasses. You can find them on YouTube if you missed them, right? And look at the people that we have. Amazing people. Brewster Kale is a local legend, okay? He's the one that coined the phrase, that's so Miami, or it's so Miami, I think it is. Hashtag, it's so Miami. His agency coined it. This, I went to the airport on a trip. It's still being used a decade later. later. I think it was like over 10 years ago that he did that. And you know how you see, you know, crazy things in Miami? So the flamingo crossing the street or something? That's, it's so Miami, right? And so that, he did that. We, I read a book called, you know, Brand Seduction, and I invited the person to come on, the author. And he agreed. Brand Seduction is this new thing that he has about how to seduce the, mark, the, the customer so that they buy your stuff, okay? And how many of you sometimes feel like, you know, like that, like that slide of the lady that was kind of frustrated. We need to become mindful marketers. And Suzanne Jewell helped us understand how to do mindful marketing, right? And controlling your body, your breath, and all that stuff, even when you feel frustrated, so you can give the customers your very best. So, and get, get this. This is kind of old, this slide. We just launched uh, in April a seven-part series on AI for marketing and sales. And guess what? You know, the cool thing about this is we're not trying to sell you anything. If you go take a class out there in the wild, what are they trying to do? They're trying to sell you more stuff, right? Come to my class so I can sell you the $10,000 or $5,000 or $2,000 class on how do you can leverage AI. We're not doing that. The county already paid for this. So it's free to you. But, but please remember, it's not free stuff. The county made the investment. So please take advantage. AI for marketing and sales from BizHack. You can Google that and you'll find it and register for this Wednesday because we're going to be talking about how to use it for video. So AI for video. We had Microsoft last week. Microsoft, the guy who briefs CEOs of top five Fortune 500 companies was talking to our strivers. So we want to build the best for you all, right? You deserve the best. So we're, that's what we're trying to go for. So check this out, AI for Marketing and Sales. Um, don't miss it. Google it and start taking the class. If you could register one time, you'll have access to the library of stuff that you missed. But it's better to be live in the class because all kinds of goodies um, happen during the class. And if you catch the replay, you kind of lose on that. Okay, any questions so far? How does all this sound? All right, cool. And there's more. <laughs> so... This is the AI for marketing right here. So you register now, AI for marketing and sales, seven weeks. And the classes, people love them so much. In fact, we're averaging like almost 400 people at these classes on a Zoom. 
How many of you been in a Zoom that has almost 400 people on it? I mean, it's, it's kind of rare, right? But they love it because it's valuable. This will put money in your pocket if you know how to use it. So, and if you're an artist, this is one of the controversies, you know, about AI and technology and how that intersects with art. Um, I think as long as it's helping you become better artists, it's a tool that we can use. So how can, we need to explore, we need to understand what these tools are, how we can use them in our, in our careers, in our business, and where we need to not use them. And that's one of the things we're learning is that whatever you enter into a prompt is now the property of that company who made that AI tool and could be used. I mean, there was an, I don't know if you guys heard, there was, um, I guess, somewhere in Samsung, somebody entered something into a prompt and entered proprietary information to a prompt. That becomes the domain of the AI now because you're anything you feed it, it learns from. Does that make sense? So maybe I'm the competitor of Samsung and I want to enter. What is Samsung doing? <laughs> you know, to uh, when it comes to this and this and that. And they might just spit it out because it's part of his language model. Does that make sense? I didn't realize that danger till I took this class. So that's how powerful it is. It really is going to help you understand what this is, how you can leverage it, and how you can uh, use it to level up. Next up, and these are some of the classes. Look, the human element of AI. AI for text, translation, and email. AI for images, social media, and ads. And on the 17th, right, it's AI for video, audio, and podcasts. Do you know that you, could, um, you can clone yourself as um, an AI and give a class and you're at the beach? <laughs> you can be live or something? I mean, that's what's coming. And some of it is already here. So it's really, it's really quite impressive. And uh, you can check it out. And, uh, but you know what? I don't get excited by AI. I get excited by artists. Right? Who cares if an AI comes up with some song that sounds like Eminem? Right? I want to hear from Eminem. Right? So I don't want to hear from a copy of a, a machine that's just mimicking what it has in its, in its databases. I want to hear from you guys. Right? That's what we, the world needs. So keep that in mind. So in the resources and learning online, we have built an online school for entrepreneurs. It's called Virtual Strive 305. So if you sign up for this, you can take classes. And again, the advantage is entrepreneurs are teaching entrepreneurs, right? And on top of that, this is all free to you. And it's cutting edge stuff. It's not stuff that we're trying to sell you something. We're not. You already pay for it. It's called your taxes, right? So this is your, this is for you. So when you come on here, there's two classes and it's growing every, every month, right? You can get all kinds of classes, but there's two of them that I want you to take. One is called Profit First. How many of you know about Profit First? Is that any good? Great. It's great. You recommend it for others? Yeah. Did it change your world? Absolutely. There, you, you heard it from, look, I, I don't know this gentleman. Yeah. So he's testifying to you guys that this is amazing. Yes, it is amazing. We created a master class that you can take online for free and learn that cash management system so that you can start being wise about how you manage money through your business. Because... If you don't do it, you'll do what we've always done, which is check your balance in your bank. And if there's money there, you're happy. And if there's not, uh-oh, we got problems, right? But what about how is the money moving through the business? What's your profit margins? What are, is your operating expenses? What are your allocations? Should, what should they be? You don't know because all you're looking at is the balance. And you haven't even touched QuickBooks yet, right? So that happens all the time, guys. And I've even worked with companies around the world. And you could be a $5 million, $10 million company that can be insolvent because a project didn't manifest itself. And all of a sudden, now you're dealing with a payroll issue. And you could be 5 or $10 million in revenue. Just because you have revenue doesn't mean that you have profit. And profit is the lifeblood of the business, right? Not revenue. It's everything, right? So absolutely. So please take that out. And then we have a QuickBook class so you can learn how to manage your QuickBooks, your, 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 your books from your cell phone. That's how powerful it is. You can always be in control of your finances. And Profit First is really cool because the guy who wrote that and came up with that system, he's an entrepreneur. He's not the accounting professor, right? He tells you straight how it is. And I love that because he's honest and, and he's, he's like, we are, that's us. That's how, we, that's how we do things. So check that out, please. Virtual Strive 305. The other thing is, how many of you need a, a business coach or a consultant? Wouldn't it be nice to have a business coach or a consultant? And what if you, it was free? And it was good, free and good. <laughs> There's one person, okay, a, a couple of others. So if you want me as your business coach or consultant, 
you can sign up at the Virtual Strive 305 page. All right, so you don't have to go pay $200 to, a, to another coach. And you decide if I'm any good or not. Okay, but I've been doing this for 20 years. I've made a lot of mistakes. That's not because I'm a brainiac. It's just that I've made a lot of mistakes. I've tried a lot of different things. And you learn from that, right? You learn. Yes, did you have a question? It's for Miami-Dade County. Yeah, for Miami-Dade County. So if you need that, if you need some guidance, if you feel stuck, you need some help, you need ideas, please reach out. Don't struggle by yourself, okay? You got helpers. This is something that's still going on, but it's almost in the last stages. I've been saying that for weeks. They keep extending it, but this is called How to Start Something. And this is a $20 million initiative by the J.P. Morgan Chase with, a, with our organization called Entrepreneur Ready, which we're supporting this effort. So how many of you have not started your business yet, but you're thinking of doing it? Right? A couple. Okay. So this is a great opportunity for six to 10 months. They will train you. They will assign you a coach. And you're in a group learning A to Z of how to launch a business successfully. And you don't have to pay a penny. This is a donation by J.P. Morgan Chase of $20 million. This is only being offered in two markets, Miami and New York. By the way, New York, I mean, Miami sold out. It's like they're full. But because this is, a, I'll be honest, it's a demanding program because you have to work at it every week. But they're giving you an education that's almost like an MBA for free, right? But in entrepreneurship. And you learn to, you work with others. You're learning with a group and you get assigned a coach, so if you're struggling with something, hey, what are you struggling with? Let's talk about it. So they hold your hand and you don't have to pay a penny. But guess what happens? It's demanding. So it, there's an attrition rate, right? People don't show up. But if you're serious, it's better to invest the six months because I know how we entrepreneurs are, right? We want to move fast like the race car. But let me tell you something. It's better for you to invest six months of moving slow so that after you graduate, you can move fast then to move fast now, not know what you're doing, make mistakes, go back to square one, do it again, make another mistake, go back to square one again, right? It's better to invest the six months, ground your thing, build a foundation really strong, and then go in and move fast. Does that make sense? So this is still available. Um, there's the QR code, howtostartsomething.com. The other thing is that the mayor of Miami-Dade County, you know, Miami-Dade County has over $10 billion economy. That's our budget. It's over $10 billion. And in procurement, the county buys anything from pens to helicopters, right, to the tune of $4 billion per year. Does that make sense? $4 billion. So some of you may have ambitions to do business with the county. If you do, the mayor has launched something. She wants to make sure that, it, that our process is transparent and that we have something called the Vendor Academy so that you can learn how to become a vendor with the county. So that it's not a mystery. It's not you know a black box process. You can actually learn to see what it takes to do business with the county. So if any of you think you can land a contract with the government, this is a good opportunity to learn how Miami-Dade County does it, okay? Next up is this already passed. We were celebrating Small Business Week, Small Business Month, and we were all over the county. Yes? This one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the, um, the county buys from anywhere. Yeah. So the county will do business with companies from even from other states. OK, so you don't have to be in Miami-Dade County necessarily, technically, to do business with the county. Right. Um, Strive 305 is a program that is designed for Miami-Dade County residents or for those that if you live in Broward, but your business is in Miami-Dade County, that also qualifies. Right. So, yes. So I, I just wanted to make mention of that. So, for instance, I live in Broward County, but when I registered my business, I registered in Arizona um, and various counties. Right. So, if you don't know how to do that, then I think that's one of the major things. That's, yes. Yes. Yes, yeah, so to do business in Miami-Dade County, everybody needs to have a local business tax license, right? So it's a little certificate you hang. You see it at the restaurants, right? 
um, and you people frame it and put it on the wall, and it's for one year, and it has different colors, right? Every year is a different color. So if you want to do business in the county, and you could live in West Palm Beach, but you want to have a presence and do business in the county, you have to apply for a local business tax license. With that license, you qualify for Strive 305. So I wish we could open it up to everybody in Broward and West Palm, but you know the resources are not there, and their need is great in Miami-Dade County. Although I'll be honest, the the mayor um, is a very generous person, so I've you know don't feel like you cannot reach out to us, even if you're in Broward. We'll figure something out. There's some great Broward organizations that we can connect you to as well. So reach out to me, even if you're in Broward, doesn't matter. And if you have a local business tax license in Miami-Dade County, you qualify for all this. Yes. I think we'll fig- we can figure something out. I, I, we can't serve everybody in Broward, but you know, if we have a couple of our neighbors that want some help, I mean, I, I don't have an issue with that. And I'm sure the mayor would not either. So um, again, because she, we have that generous, you know, we're neighbors, right? <laughs> we're neighbors. But the reality is that it's a Miami-Dade County program, and you know, we have to prioritize our residents, right? So as long as there's some space, sure, we can share. Does that make sense? Okay, great. So the Vendor Academy is something you can look into. If any of you want to do business with the county, we can, we can talk. This was Small Business Week. This already passed, um, but Miami-Dade County Parks was hiring, so I wanted to share that with everybody. Um, it may not be too late. If anybody wants to know any young people that want to be camp counselors during the summer, um, they're, they're hiring, and uh, it's a fun, fun job. So check that out as well if you're interested. Okay, so that's for... Trainings, right? So access to affordable workspaces. How many of you know about the Miami-Dade County libraries and all the things they offer? So Ellen, they even have sound booths where you can record your your music and finish your album, right? So they have co-working spaces at certain libraries under a program called You Make Miami. So please look up You Make Miami. They have advanced locations where they have green screens, 3D printers, they have video cameras, they have mixers, they have, you know, with guitars, sewing machines, whatever you need is all there. You don't have to pay a penny for it. One of the things I say, look, what if I wanted to start a YouTube channel? You can go record things at the, at the library. And you need photography for your photo, for your products, go to the library. You need a headshot that looks professional, not from the car, right? Go to, the, go to the library. Don't, you don't have to pay 300 bucks for a professional photographer. They do amazing work. They'll let you do it for yourself. They will teach you how to use the equipment if you want to. And occasionally, if there's, if there's bandwidth, they will take your picture. They will, do, they will do the thing for you if there's bandwidth. So this is free. Guess what? Anybody who has real estate in Miami-Dade County has paid for this already. This is your money being, your investment being returned back to you. So take advantage. They have one for the kids. If you have children that, you know, we have a big crisis with gun violence in the country. And a lot of them are, are young children getting caught up in, the, in, these, in these things, right? So there's something called You Media, and it's for the kids. Does that make sense? They have guitars. They have all kinds of cool things. They can learn how to make comic books, draw. Uh, they have guitars, music equipment galore. They can record whatever they need all from those locations. So take them to the U-Media and have them play around with this equipment that's there. Thousands of dollars in equipment. They can learn skills. You know, I, I read somewhere that, um, um, what, who's the, the producer or the creator of that song, uh, Because I'm Happy, what was his name? Pharrell, Pharrell, thank you. Pharrell was one of these children, right, that was aimless in life. One day they put him in front of a, one of those mixing boards and they showed him how, how to mix music. And he saw it, and the rest is history, right? I'm my, my own, I can testify to my own self. Um, I was one of those children lost, and then I saw an iMac or a, a Macintosh computer that we can lay out the newspaper in it, and it changed my life. So you never know. So please get your children or your, in, your, in your churches, your neighbors, let them know about you media. And for yourselves, you have you make, Okay. The mayor also and the commissioners opened this Larsenia J. Bullard Plaza, a 14,000 square foot facility in Richmond Heights, so that they have affordable retail space. And there's an incubator in here. And this, this was uh, released, I think, when it was, like a year and a half ago. So again, affordable re- space in Richmond Heights. 
And there's even restaurant space there. Also, we're here with our friends at the Haitian American Chamber of Commerce, Nayed. There she is. There's Nayed. And we open Scale Up 305, which Nayed runs. Okay? We want to make sure everybody has an opportunity to participate and be an entrepreneur. So at with ACOF, we built this amazing location in North Miami where you have the support that you need in your neighborhood, in close to your home, no matter where you are, through the libraries, to these facilities that the mayor is opening. We want them to be close by so that everybody can take advantage of the opportunity to be entrepreneurs. And by the way, I never mentioned, do you guys ever stop to think what the definition of entrepreneurship is? Right? It's like one of these big words that we throw around, but what does it really mean? Well, there's a professor at Harvard who is considered the granddaddy of entrepreneurship studies. And um, he said that it was this, the pursuit of opportunity. Everybody got me? Everybody here is doing that, right? You're pursuing opportunity despite resources controlled. Isn't that cool? If you're doing that, you are an entrepreneur. If you're spotting opportunities and you see them, because not everybody sees them, right? There's some people who walk right by them. They don't see the opportunity. But the entrepreneur sees it here, 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 over there, everywhere. And they don't stop. Just because they don't have the money or the resources right away, they still move on the opportunity. That's an entrepreneur. It's not who's building the next billion dollar unicorn. It is who's spotting opportunities and moving to take advantage of them, even if they don't have the resources immediately. They know they can find them, okay? So I'm so proud of what the work that we're doing with, with ACOF, and I thank them for um, their support. Uh, next up is access to community. We have a rolling roadshow called Mog Mogul Maker Expo. This is in partnership with our libraries. We've had them at Westchester, Cutler Bay, North Dade, and Naranja, and we're gonna have the next one uh, near Brownsville. Okay, it's coming up. So if you sign up for the newsletter, you'll get the notification, okay? So next up is, this is one of my things. So remember, sir, that you said the profit first was so great. Well, as it stands now, you have to go read a book, right? Some people don't like reading, right? So there is the online class that has videos that explains profit first, but this system is so good that we're investing in creating a conference, four of them, two in English, two in Spanish, where 250 entrepreneurs are gonna get a chance during one full day to really integrate profit first into their operation so that you can learn it with others and you can have fun while doing it. So all of you are gonna be invited if you sign up for my newsletter as soon as we have the first event, which is coming up in the next two months, okay? We just have to pin down the date. It's not 100% pinned down yet. But as soon as it, it re it's released, you will be invited and we only have room for 250 for the first conference and all of you should participate, and you're invited. So please keep an eye out for that. And that's all I got for now. There's so much other things I can tell you, but it really, I don't want to overwhelm you. It's already overwhelming as it is. But please realize that we are very serious in the county. The mayor wants to make sure she has four E's, okay? And check this out. Number one is equity. Everybody gets a chance to participate. Number two is engagement. She wants a dialogue with residents, not just... I tell you what the county is doing. No, we want a conversation. We want to listen to you and your concerns. The third one is the economy, right? All of you play in those three. And the last one is the environment, which as we see, we have to take care of. We saw the flooding that happened um, in Fort Lauderdale. We know this stuff is real and that we're in the front lines of it. So we have to be more conscientious about the environment and being green to make sure that we're prepared for whatever's coming. And so those are the mayor's four E's. And so it's important for you guys to see that you embody three of them. That's how important all of you are. So I want to applaud all of you for your courage and your hard work. And please continue to build your business and be that artist that we all need you to be. Thank you so much.